Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to episode 48, Colin. <sighs> wow, that's getting pretty close to the big 5-0. Uh, for something that we were going to do just to help our clients out and help the tourism industry with bringing on experts, I think it's turning into maybe a regular item, which is pretty cool. It's got some legs and it's definitely, you know, could be getting out of control, I think. I think so. Well, we're booked for three months, so uh, that's a good thing, right? Awesome. There. No, so the a, awesome. a Travel Talk Show, just so you newbies know, is a podcast of the A Canada Marketing Group and acanadatravel.com. The A Travel Talk Show is broadcast every single Tuesday, 7 p.m., right here on Facebook Live and YouTube Live from our base camp in beautiful Maple Leaf, Canada, a destination and a base camp unknown to except for a very few including you junior yes i'm usually uh yep. unaware of our surroundings <laughs> <laughs> so tonight colin tonight we have a special guest an award-winning yes. photologist a very special guest yes a photologist Exciting. that's our canadian a word. our canadian word of the episode is photologist that sounds good yes I, yep i mean we make up words all the time i like that one <laughs> right works for me photologist yep. so our ph photologist today is a wildlife and nature photographer the great ralph hicker is going to be joining us today and ralph if you don't know and you've been living in a cave for the last 20 years ralph has been a wildlife and nature photographer since he was 18 years old his passion and hard work and his beautiful photography which i have been following has propelled him to the top of the ladder when it comes to wildlife and nature photographers. His client list, Colin, blows you away. He's worked with people like Porsche, BMW, Holland America, Alaskan Airlines, Fairmont Hotels, Toyota, National Geographic, and Canadian Geographic, Reader's Digest, just to name a few. Impressive. Isn't that a huge resume? Very much so. I mean, yes. I've read, uh... I've probably seen his work before without even knowing it. I'm telling you, if you want a good humpback whale and a good bear and a big cougar shot, you got to check this guy out. He knows where it's at. Anyways, Ralph is going to be joining us. The highlight of the show, Mr. Photologist himself, will be coming in around 10 minutes. But before that, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. My name, if you haven't figured it out yet, is Greg Gerard. I'm the Cobro founder of the award winning website, <laughs> acantravel.com, which was just voted best nationwide travel adventure site by Lux Life Tourism and Travel Awards. Yes. And with a Cobra owner of A Canada Marketing Group. We also are storytellers, adventure seeker on the award-winning blog, which we were just ranked 23rd of the top 1,000 travel bloggers in the world. <laughs> Our blog is called Two Brothers, Two Feet, Two Curious, and Two Canadian. And your co-host. Very nice. Of and your co-host of tonight's highly publicized, very popular AA travel talk show with the Crazy Canuck Brothers. And I'm honored to be Cobro hosting with my brother Junior right there. And who are you, man? What an intro, bro. I'm the Cobro of the Cobro host of uh, the A Canada Travel Talk Show here, acanadatravel.com. I'm also the keeper of the code. Mr. Rob Hicker. That's who our guest is going to be tonight there, Junior. I'm excited about it. I mean, some of those pictures I can recall seeing over the years, even uh, in the intro there. Uh -huh. I mean, he's one lucky guy to have a career career like that. Doing oh, what he that. loves, following his dreams. And he works hard. I mean, nothing comes easy. You ask anyone who's, who's pursuing their passions, as of us two, nothing comes easy, people. It's yes. hard work especially pictures like that i mean they don't show up like for you when you first get there you gotta that's lots of patience he's a very yes. patient man to get pictures like that <laughs> together junior and i we are called the brothers of tourism a very cool nickname given to us by our viewers and clients so we're gonna keep it it was given we're gonna keep it Homegrown Canadian tourism advocates, seekers of adventure, collectors of bumps and bruises, wildlife whisperers, and maple syrup guzzling top road tripping Canucks. That's who we are. We run this show, and it's one of the best things since sliced bread. But, <laughs> but, this is a live show. Stuff happens. All if the time. The internet goes off. 
uh, we don't want you to change the channel. You're going to stick right here, and we're going to all log on, our, including our guest will be logging on back. If we go and our guest has to hold the show all by himself, don't worry. We'll be back. We'll log back on. If our guest goes, wow, then you got the junior and senior show until our guest comes back on. The bottom mm. line, do not, do not touch that dial. Do not change the channel. So we're going to do a little bit of prelim here. We would like to talk a few minutes. We're going to talk about the canvas that Rolf creates his beautiful wildlife photos on. And that okay. canvas is nature. So I'm just going to give you a little scope of nature in our beautiful country, Canada. Canada, if you did not know, is divided into 15 terrestrial and five marine eco zones. Okay. Canada is home to 25% of the world's wetlands. This is where wildlife live, work, and play. And so does our guests photologist, Rolf Hicker. Did you know called the wildlife in Canada it consists of over 80,000 species in our country? Incredible. Yep. 200 mammal, 460 bird, 40 amphibian, 40 reptile, and over 1,200 fish species, and two brothers. <laughs> it's a lot of species, right? That is a lot of species. I mean, yep. Canada is known, that's what we're known for it's so beautiful and you want to get out in nature and see some wildlife mm -hmm. this place to come yep first and welcome we got to welcome our guests we got to welcome to this live travel tz turn shock show we are turning some heads tonight we're going to create some photo rumors tonight we're going to take no photographer prisoners tonight <laughs> when it comes to creating unique canadian stories and experiences the canadian way our guest mr Rolf hicker is the man to talk to one of Canada's uh, top nature and wildlife photographers. Being that we are outdoor adventure and wildlife fanatics, Junior. Yes, fanatic seekers. Fanatic seekers, fanatic addicts, whatever you want to call us. We encourage Canadians to reuse, recycle, and rewatch this talk show every Tuesday. <laughs> Yes. Because yes. you know what? It's important as Canadians, being environmental, it's important we recycle good Canadian content. And that's yeah. what this is tonight with our guest, Rolf Hicker. I'm going to show you. Uh, Rolf was kind enough to mm -hmm. send us in a little clip here, of uh, a video clip of some of his work. So we're going to sneak nice. that in before we bring Rolf onto the show. I had to show it twice because I wanted to see the bear shot again. Get off mute. Oh. Come on. I had to see the bear shot. So all you viewers, tough luck. I got the controls and I wanted to see the bear shot again. You're on mute. <laughs> I unmuted it again. Thanks You're right for joining the, the show. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you. Thank this is our first technical issue. Could that, turn well, into a physical argument. <laughs> That's what we brothers do. That's what we do. And we're I mean, not we shy. Get it. We'll do we it get online. It. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> that, now, now. Okay. Let me tell you about our guest because uh, we don't want to take up his time. We'll take up Junior's time. That's a given. But we don't want to take up his time. Our guest today is Mr. Rolf Hicker, an award-winning photologist. Oh, sorry, we got to use the less Canadian words for you out, Canadian people. Award winning photographer and filmmaker, photologist, and also 18 years old when he started. Originally so from Germany. Uh, excuse me, you're interrupting Rolf's uh, intro. Oh, Rolf's, okay. Okay. I'm, mm, here, yeah. let me just mute okay. myself. No, that no, you can't do that. We did. That was a bad thing. Originally from Germany, Rolf moved here. And luckily for us Canadians, Rolf brought his talents to Canada in 2004. Rolf has traveled extensively around the world on assignment work. His hard work has put him at the very top 
of wildlife and nature photography his client list we've named it and if you tuned in late we're going to name it again bmw alaska airlines national geographic canadian geographic readers digest just to mention a few in 2009 ralph decided to call the northern part of vancouver on british columbia his home that's our backyard junior yes it is a wise wise choice yes that's where the gerard brothers grew up we grew up on that island and what a great uh childhood we had with such gorgeous mm -hmm. i mean gorgeous ocean gorgeous scenery yeah great place uh, to grow up. nice thing too is i think uh, i think just because he decided i think he took the island because he heard about us living on there probably i, I mean, think that does, that was probably the swaying decision does he live at 1051 trunk road <laughs> did, did he get the same house? <laughs> okay, so what we'd like to do is everybody, as usual, put your hands together and give our guest, Mr. Rolf Hicker, a great applause and welcome him to our show. Mr. Rolf Hicker, welcome. Howdy ho, eh? Hey. <laughs> Ah, uh, he's he, he's already getting it, eh? Oh, he's been here a while, I think. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Rolf, thank you very much for joining us on our A Travel Talk Show, Broadcast Canada wide, international, coast to coast to coast. Welcome to our show, Rolf. Well, thanks, guys, for having me. It's a pleasure, and um, I hope my Canadian English is good enough to actually be with your show because it seems like it's really Canadian. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah we we that, that that's the beautiful thing us canadians like to travel around the world and we get along with pretty much everybody so i think you're in you're naturally in rolf oof thank you yeah <laughs> so rolf could you please we gave a, a little bit of a bio on your extensive resume and we were being uh not kind because it's a heck of a lot longer um maybe if you want you can fill us in on a few of the gaps and some of the highlights and tell us uh, our viewers uh now and the ones that are going to watch this later for the next years and years a little bit about who rolf hicker is huh well that's a good question uh, if you guys ever got an answer to that please let me know <laughs> <laughs> it depends who you ask exactly. it's uh yeah it's been uh, an interesting journey um before canada in canada it's even more interesting right now of course um with COVID, um, mm -hmm. it's really hard. If you ask me who I am, um, that's me. That's what you see is what you get. I'm straight German, and I tell you right in your face what you get is what you see. So <laughs> I actually have to correct you, but that's kind of being politically correct, um, that I actually started being a professional already when I was 16. But in Germany, at that time, you weren't allowed to work under the age of 18 so that's why my bio says 18 but i actually started when i was 16 and um the whole thing how it got developed that's quite a story i don't know if you guys got a week or not but i mean i uh -huh. can share it yeah yeah uh, well you know what we are canadians we're good at tipping so i tipped you two years so you know there you go i gave you a good two-year tip <laughs> we can extend the show for a week if you want yeah i mean why not <laughs> all right well don't don't, no, we can do it. We can do it. Twenty-four all-nighter marathon, yeah. Rolf marathon. Yeah. Uh, don't, 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 don't go there because some of my <laughs> European friends they're already pretty mad that they had to stay up till four o'clock in the morning. I didn't, I didn't let them know that you guys actually record this. I said, well, that's Canada. You know, you're there or you're not. So yeah. that's your choice. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Welcome, on. welcome, welcome to our one, two German friends that stayed up at four a.m. Chat it up, give it up for Rolf. Good job, Germany. We love you for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week at four a.m. <laughs> and they're not just the Germans, by the way. I got some some people from the Netherlands contacted me today. I got some in France, um, in Switzerland, of course. Um, yeah. Even a few outside of Europe, in the UK. And uh, sorry, I had to wrap that in. And yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, um, that's yeah, perfect. Good dig. Let's make really, sure we really give cool. them. Uh, let's make sure we give them an Emmy award-winning show, Junior. Behave yourself. <laughs> And let's make this thing rock. So, Ralph, it's no secret you're a top nature and travel photographer. I've been watching your bear cougar 
your killer whale orca your humpback whale photos Amazing. for some time now and i actually had the kahunas to contact you and say get on our show big guy you got some good stuff to share so you have worked with many major brands but there's got to be some highlights so what are some of the most memorable assignments as a photographer for you well one of the most odd ones and one of the most memorable one is for sure when i received the call and the other party did not really identify themselves this was before we got all those spam calls mm -hmm. and um they said would you be available for a photo shoot in the arctic and because i at that time i was very well known for my arctic shots that was before digital digital just came so it was still all old school okay and i was fairly known for my time up in alaska um in northern canada shooting northern lights and stuff and um so they called me because I'm a wildlife photographer and I'm fairly experienced in the Arctic, which not everybody is. And they said, well, unfortunately, we cannot give you any details. And I said, well, that's quite interesting. You want me to hire and you don't have any details for me. So what's uh -huh. the big secret? I said, well, that's they said that 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 exactly is the problem. Um, the assignment would be that you are in the Arctic with wildlife and one very famous person. Do you want to do it? And I said, sure, why not? I mean, I'm 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 kind of known for that, that I'm always open for adventure. So I said, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. What does it mean? Well, it means that you got to jump in the plane tomorrow. I said, oh, oh. no. <laughs> Do I have time to charge my batteries at least? So yeah. basically, I was a really weird assignment because I had no information whatsoever. They finally gave me the name. So I said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's OK. That's that's good enough to know. And so I had to fly to Prince Edward Island. And as soon as I was there, I got briefed. The interesting part already is what, what I didn't know, that it was politically, uh, let's say, interesting, to say the least. Um, there were two very big parties, um, pro and contra, which I didn't know before. And um, by pure coincident my equipment never arrived on oh. on there so somebody already knew what what was going on and um but but always i always got one camera i always got one or two lenses in my carry-on and even mm -hmm. today when they don't allow it anymore I, I i just don't enter anything um serious without my equipment on my body because it's part of me and um i just don't give it all away so anyway i arrived there and i got briefed and they just told me that I will be with Sir Paul McCartney tomorrow. And it's like, whoa, whoa, are you <laughs> about that Sir Paul McCartney? Or are you talking wow. about Sir Paul McCartney? I don't know yet. And they said, yes. no, the Sir Paul McCartney. Wow. Um, wow. So that was amazing. Um, long, long story made short, we flew up um, out to the ice flows um, and we photographed him and his ex-wife Heather Mills um, on the ice flows with the white seals, the harp seals. And I had the pleasure of basically being with them all day. Um, we had our own helicopter. The press was flown in just for 15, 20 minutes. So it was mm -hmm. an in and out while we were out there all the time. So I had a lot of private time with him, which was not that we got involved very much because I'm not that guy who bothers him in the time where He's finally by himself. Yeah. Uh, people ask me, oh, how many pictures did you take of yourself with him? And I say, I don't have a single one because I gladly give him his privacy. You know, I appreciate mm -hmm. human beings enough to just say, well, yeah. That, so anyway, really cool. but, it, yeah. but it was really cool for me being in the helicopter with, the, with him and his ex-wife. And it is just a, a full blown musician. He could not sit still for longer than two seconds. His hands are moving on his knees. He started singing and it was no show because there was nobody else there. Is so that there... was really an amazing um, assignment I had. That was just one of those experiences. You know, I photographed all the famous wildlife, but I never photographed the most famous wildlife human beings. So yeah, was cool. yeah that's a great story. Wow. Right. And I'm good enough to make stuff up for you guys. Yeah! <laughs> I told you it was worth sending you that ten dollar bill. <laughs> uh, oh boy. So Rob, you uh I just thought when I was researching you through your your websites and um and your social media, 
I, I thought your story, I mean, that's one thing I, I've watched your pictures and I, and I love wildlife. I'm, I, as I said, in our pre-show in the virtual green room, we were hacking down on some Bannock and Screech that, uh, that we were basically, um, I'm a hack when it comes to photography. I love it. I got 60,000 photos, but, um, uh, I'm a hack. So one of the things I was really impressed of was that when I was reading behind the photographer, the, behind the photologist, I found that uh, your story was like you moved from Germany in 2004, your struggles all the way from becoming a, a well-known wildlife and nature photographer. And then you come over to the West Coast, you plant yourself on the farthest, pretty much farthest place you can get on the West Coast beside Haida Gwaii in Canada. Um, and then you took a liking to our wildlife here, the grizzly bears, the black bears. Uh, my favorites are the orca and the humpbacks and other marine life. So why marine why are you marine and coastal wildlife why is that your wheelhouse well you got that all completely wrong in the first place <laughs> <laughs> i first like it more and more first of all i'm a very private person so what uh, so you must have been that one person actually checking my website out so thank you for that i really appreciate <laughs> that um it's it's been a, a, a long thing in the making um first of all just allow me to to um spend a couple of minutes on this because this is really who i am and what I'm doing. Um, my brother, he lives up in Alaska, way up in the boonies, like seven hours on gravel road up north. Oh, I love it. Nice. Beautiful, amazing. So I was up there and he had one of those old folding kayaks. And uh, when, like I flew to Vancouver, I hitchhiked all the way up there and I hitchhiked back and I had the kayak with me, came down the ferry from Prince Rupert. And um, I had no idea about the ocean, uh, no idea about Canada because I was on the way between Seattle and and Alaska at that time. But of course I planned some time and I thrown that kayak in Telegraph Cove um, into the water, paddled down that first day. It was absolutely amazing, man. I made so yes. much ground. It was awesome. Yeah. I had no idea about tides, wind, yeah. wildlife. <laughs> Whoa. I have no That's idea quite how adventure I survived then. I have no idea how I survived it, but anyway. Nice. You know, it was great. I was just 18 at that time, I believe. And um, it was awesome. I found a nice bay finally after 12 hours of paddling because <laughs> there are not a lot of bays where you actually can get out in the kayak. So uh, of yeah. course I didn't know that. So I put my tent <laughs> behind the, the driftwood it was awesome. Just after midnight, I wake up completely underwater. So the down <laughs> bay was wet. <laughs> so I decided my week long trip will be probably only one night long that was okay so now i had to paddle back again no idea about tides wind so i was mm. paddling the next day i was basically going backwards so that was quite an interesting <laughs> experience for me you know being german like oh you, you gotta know what's what's going on uh i just couldn't figure it out but all of a sudden and i'm not lying out of the blue right beside the kayak here's this two meter dorsal fin coming up on me and it's like <gasps> <laughs> what the is that you know so again i didn't have a lot of um knowledge at that time you know that was uh. that was before the internet travel guides they were like eight years old when they got published yeah. so it that was just one of those life experiences for me which formed me which caught me which i blame for my entire life <laughs> It's just yeah. been that experience. And since that, I've been wow. over here every single year. I've been working with friends in Port McNeil. They got a whale watching operation. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Um, I've been working on their boat for a long time. I was shooting a super 16 millimeter movie in Johnson Strait about the northern resident killer whales. Nice. And so for me, it was a second home very early on. I spent most summers over here um, when I was not on assignment anywhere else. And I did one very, very crazy thing, which I will never forget my entire life uh, because it basically almost costed my life. I came here and a friend was saying, well, that big company named National Geographic, they just stopped the project here. They were trying to film killer whales underwater following boats. Because that's what they do mm -hmm. their dolphins right they go in the mm -hmm. wake and they surf and yeah. yippee, they're having a lot of fun yeah yep. so at that time you know the cameras were still like 500 kilograms and 
it wasn't that easy just to put a camera on the water you know it was way beyond uh, way before gopros and all that it's so easy today at that, yeah, it's I, nuts. Yeah. at that time i had the very first one of my finger cameras and that's thankful to a friend of mine um the arctic jungle production team which at that time i met in newfoundland over at takamo lodge friends of mine and they had an ultralight and they rigged the ultralight with a lot of those little what they called finger cameras at that time they mm -hmm. were just maybe that oh where's my screen here like oh. basically <laughs> that that long okay. and it was kind of the first digital camera quality was me but it was okay so anyway after i heard that national geographic gave up at that time for me not possible that was just not in my vocabulary mm -hmm. so i said oh all right yeah it's not a problem so to make that story very short i lost seven cameras one hundred fifty thousand dollars there oh somewhere my there God. in the ocean <laughs> yeah. pressure of the water we had to figure out how to that's hilarious film because whenever you put something on the water you start moving it creates their own air bubbles you don't get a clear shot and then we had um the steel poles like that thick and the six seven eight knots poof that just broke off holy so it was a big big process and uh, with a german friend of uh, of mine up here well he's half german actually but I, yeah he's, he's still got some some good german technology in his head um he's a really really smart guy and he's a really like just figuring stuff out and with him we figured it out how we were able to to film those killer whales surfing underneath it the footage was never public uh, publicly seen i'm still no. sitting on it now wow. of course it's so old um it's of of course today very contra but at that time you know 20 years ago there were there were no rules about whale watching there was nothing mm -hmm. i mean at, at that time just before that in the 70s i believe they still were shooting killer whales so mm. we were just trying really to figure out what are those guys doing behind those boats mm. how close do they really get because all you saw is 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 above the surface all of a sudden a killer whale come up jumps out of the air gets air and boom and then all you see is the dorsal fin going 25 knots right yeah. above the surface yeah. so i was able to film it i'm still sitting on the footage i still hope that maybe a tv station one day will buy it <laughs> mm -hmm. um also it's so old now um but that was one of those big projects i've done over here for many many years and then i was very lucky because i was on that whale watching boat where we had the cameras attached that i was teaching photography on the boat i was fixing cameras i was cleaning toilets and so i've done <laughs> all the important work and um I got my work visa and another work visa and then I got the hint that actually from immigration that it would be a good time now to apply for my permanent residentship because otherwise I would have just been on work visas because I'm not really good with bureaucracy. Yeah. I just don't have the time for it. But anyway, that way how I immigrated. But when you say 14 years ago, I'm basically over here for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah and when so you when you were coming over to do your your i guess your canadian assignments with your work visas which is really cool what what sort of photography when you were growing up in germany what what sort of photography caught your attention there well i've done as always um something very special in germany the you know as a as a okay let let me pop that bubble first everybody thinks oh it's so cool you're traveling a wildlife photographer you know you make lots of money and it's yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a lifestyle it's yeah. a lifestyle there, there are a very few guys yeah and i know a few of them they are able to make their living off that for mm -hmm. me it was always to find a way how i can follow my passion and somehow survive with it so what i've done in germany in austria and switzerland and luxembourg all the kind of german speaking um countries i used to do public slideshows okay. and because a slideshow at that time you know we built little well we called them computers at that time they were just little boxes <laughs> just just to steer two slide projectors in um dissolve technique that was like mind-blowing technology at the time <laughs> believe it or not that's how old i am don't yeah. say it. yeah no so, we, we can edit that we'll edit that 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please cut that out. Um, so anyway, that wasn't enough for me. So I started also because I also liked the video, the cinematography effect. So, you know, stills have their thing with the sharpness and the crispness. But film also has something just with the motion. So I said, hey, why can I not just put those two things together? Well, mm -hmm. again, that was the time where we were happy to put two slide projectors together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not even mentioning three of them, which I actually had three live plus two backups. And a friend of mine, he was fixing the cinema projectors. So he had all the knowledge. So he built me, custom built me a projector, which I could at least from my from my pult where I was standing, I, like it's a live show. I was on stage every night. And so I could steer the projector on off, on off. That, that, that was all I could do. <laughs> so I had to involve black film in between. So there was a slide and then all of a sudden the film projector started, um, started up and all of a sudden that waterfall which was still so far, all of a sudden started flowing. And we're talking about big screens, eight meter screens, huge halls, up to 3,500 people. Um, it was really cool. I had a band doing my own music for it. It was really, really, really cool. I really enjoyed that. People at that time really enjoyed it. Of course, we had lots of opposition. They said, well, if I want to go asleep, I go to my neighbor and watch his slideshow. No, it's been done really professionally. Um, I had over a half million people in all of my shows. I've done that over 15 years and I've done most of my shows on Canada. Mm -hmm. And this was how I ended up here beside okay. my experience. Because in 1982, I was here the first time. Stubbs Island Charter, which I believe was the very first whale watching operation in Canada. They just started out. They had really? like wow. 10 guests a whole season. People yeah. were saying like, who want to pay money to yeah. see the blackfish? I remember that. <laughs> right? So... I've done my first show about up here. And the year later, they had 80% Germans. Hey, yeah. guys, I had nothing to do with that. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. exciting for me, seeing that I do a show on Telegraph Cove. Telegraph Cove at that stage was not even mentioned in a travel guide. Believe yeah. that or not. Wow. That's that, is yeah. <laughs> that is a long time ago. That is a long time ago, Ralph. So anyway, that's really <laughs> how I started. I've done my slideshows. I, I've been traveling through Canada many, many times. I got Canada books out. Um, I got my very own Canada book. I shot panoramic. I shot large format, medium format, 35 mil. Um, so I know Canada really, really well. Um, I, I had to make the tough decision if I stayed in Newfoundland, which I really, really loved. Um, the oh, best yeah. Of the, the that's beautiful there. Um, over at Main Brook area, St. Anthony, it was just, I really loved it. But um, when I crossed Canada all the way over, it was with a camper. We had a big satellite dish on top, everything straight online. At that time, internet just started. So that was really cool. Besides that the um, satellite dish never worked, but that's a different story. Yeah, that's <laughs> a hassle there, for sure. But as soon as I hit the ferry from Vancouver over to Port McNeil, and I know it sounds very romantic. It was sunset, <laughs> and I said, oh, sorry, Newfoundland. I know I got so many friends over there, but yeah. I, this is just confirmation. That's a call. And yeah, then I settled. Now I got, now I'm settled. Divorced there you kids, go. Just as every it. regular person. And yeah. you're Canadian? Uh, no, I'm not. No? Not I not waited. Official. I waited till this year, and now I don't have the time with COVID. COVID. Um, I actually will apply this year um, because I'm now in an age group, which I don't have to tell you guys, that <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to do all those those tests. And, and yeah. like, like again, I've been here long enough. I, I, I don't have to study history for the next 18 months just to get a passport. And it's also not that easy for me because Germany doesn't allow two passports. Um, while I live here, um, my mom is still alive. My dad just just died a few years ago. And I just have a hard time to give up my German passport because what happens when I have a stroke? I may, I may don't speak um, English afterwards. I just still have my roots yeah. connected to Germany while I mm -hmm. feel Canadian. I live here. I pay my taxes here. This is my home. I live here. But when you're raised and born in a country... Um, it's it's just hard to give up. So my mm. my my uh, question so far was, 
getting the Canadian passport and giving my German passport away, now it's possible for me to have both. And now cool. I will probably apply for it whenever I have the time. So probably in the next 10 years or yeah. something. Ask me. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, yeah. I find it, I find it very hard to, to, uh, I don't even have to deal with that. Actually, I'm Canadian. So there we yeah. go. We don't, we but gotta, I get it. You got to be proud of your heritage. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, you're an honorary Canadian and a, a great yeah. product of Germany. Exactly. So <laughs> you've got this new website. I got it up on the screen here, wealthhickerphotography.com. If I'm a newbie and I'm saying, hey, I'd love to see some of this nature and wildlife photography of Ralph Hicker, what is, uh, what's somebody new going to find when they look at your website? Well, uh, honestly, I have a little bit of a website mess right now. I got a very, very large website, which is hickerphoto.com. Oh, let um, me put that up. We used to, yeah, I'm just trying to keep you busy, you know. Uh, <laughs> we used to have 1.5 million visitors on this website. Again, this is going back to the early days of internet. We were traveling. We were putting all the travel information online. Again, travel guides taking five years after all the research till they are printed. At that time, that was basically instant messaging. And um, it's been really good, but it got really difficult because of it. Um, we never had a lot of money to really build it up right with a custom software. And now it's so messed up that I can't migrate it into a newer frame. So I have most of my images up there, but all my newer images, and that's how I identify myself today. Now that I live here, now that I'm on the other side of photography, because I do tours today, very small tours, only four guests. I hate mass tourism. Um, so I keep it small and private. I want to have nice. friends on my boat and not paying customers. Um, yes, they're paying my bills, but I'm not using any agents in between. It's me and nobody else. So it's really nice. I really, really, really enjoy it because it's personal. So my newer stuff is on that website you just mentioned, the rolfhickerphotography.com. Um, I just built it up. I think I just launched it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, COVID keeping me so busy. Um, not that I'm out on tours, but I'm answering so many emails. You know, I'm already a professional um, email answerer, customer service slash whatever COVID um, mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. Um, because because I do everything personal. And if my guests are asking me, I write them back and says, well, you know, this is how much I know. These are the rules right now. Um, you know, I do what I can. It's just, it's me. You know, I do what I can, but it also just simply creates a mass amount of work and as a one-man show i really have trouble keeping up so anyway oh, yeah. sorry back to the website that's where my newer stuff is from up here mostly i got a, a few of the older uh, medium and large format scans in there as well but all the bears all the orca whales the humpback whales the black bears the grizzly bears all what we have here on beautiful northern Vancouver island is yes. in there go in and if you after that one don't want to come then something is wrong with you yeah i tell you one <laughs> thing here here on northern vancouver island we are still taking care of our guests yes it's getting busier and i'm not too happy about it with lots of people just adding more and more and more boats because we got to grow faster and bigger and we got to have more people but we still up here have a really unique community on on the water yes, the yeah. guides are all absolutely amazing we are a good community and you really get very ethical tourism up here with most of them yeah. and it's very simple mm. for you to check as bigger the boats are and as more boats one company has as more mass tourism it is yeah. Yeah. but yeah. again up here up here it is still I just can't tell people, especially the locals, which I feel like they don't even know their backyard. When I talk to yeah. people, oh, where do you live? Uh, oh, Port McNeil. Oh, where is that? Yeah, on northern Vancouver Island. Oh, that's, that's oh. sad if they don't know that. Oh, I thought Campbell River is the end of the road. Well, it kind of was about 25 years ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> and they still guys, had a this, dirt road then? This, yes, it was. Yes. But at the very early days, I remember, I think I had to go by a gold river and then come back somewhere there over the mountains. So it's been mm -hmm. quite an adventure in the very early days. So guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get that message out. Northern Vancouver Island is still a hidden secret. Yes. Uh, we have the Northern resident killer whales up here, the orca whales in the summer, they arrive normally mid of July. They stay 
well, we can watch them till October. They sometimes see it till November, December, but then weather isn't that great. We got the grizzly bears here, you know, also in Campbell River. It's just really, guys, this area here, locals come, explore it. Yep. I promise you, you will yep. not regret. Mm -hmm. It's the real yep. meal deal. Oh, yeah. And the other thing, too, because we've been up that way, I think, over 50 times. We've been to either Port Manila or Port Hardy. Then we also take off to Winter Harbor, Coles Harbor, right? All that good stuff there. Um, we went, we've done the Cape Scott Trail. We've hiked that five times. That's gorgeous. It's another attraction up there. And, of course, like you mentioned, the wildlife. It's also a top scuba area, which people aren't Absolutely. aware of. Absolutely. One of the best cold water diving areas. Yep. Um, I only done a couple of dives here when we were filming. Um, it just never worked out for me, and I'm not a diver in dry suits, so um, I'm not a professional underwater uh, filmmaker and photographer. I've been to the Galapagos and stuff, mm -hmm. but it is what I'm hearing from people around the world. It is one of the very, very best cold yep. water diving spots. And as you said, places like Winter Harbor, yep. places like Coal Harbor, like Port yep. Alice, uh, beside the big towns, Port McNeil, of course, and, and um, uh, Port Hardy, Telegraph Cove. Mm -hmm. There is so much to see up here, guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every local who hasn't been up here, it's like, guys, what's what's up? You know, we're flying yeah. all over the world. I'll tell you what, yeah. find, find us a cabin out there. We'll move tomorrow. Yeah, this is, <laughs> and this, seriously, guys, this is the very best time for locals to experience. Yes. We don't yes. have international travelers, yep. which means... Mm -hmm. It is very, very quiet because the international travelers, they know all about it. 90% yeah. of my guests are from overseas. New Zealand, mm -hmm. Australia, Germany, of course, Switzerland, Austria, the UK, Scotland. Yeah. I got Irish people here. Um, lots of people from the Netherlands, from France, from Italy. Mm -hmm. They all know about it. But mm -hmm. our locals, yeah. not so much. So really get that message out, guys. Yeah. Yeah. This is the year to mm -hmm. come. Oh, we yeah. don't have a lot of traffic. You will never ever see it like this again. Last year, yeah. it's been amazing with nobody yes. out there. As heartbreaking as it is for families, for people like myself, you know, we all got really hit really, really hard. But we are also very strong and we love what we do. So we are very passionate. So we will make it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. for everybody in BC, all the way over to the East Coast in Canada. If travel opens up yep. again, this is where you want to be this year mm -hmm. because there is no international travel. And I guarantee you, you will have an absolute blast here. Yeah. I think another thing to point out too is, is uh, to extend the average stay. I mean, don't be thinking of if you're going to go North Island because it's all small communities, it's a two-nighter because you, I think something a lot of people forget and being that we're big avid lovers of the North Island is it's also uh, right in your town, Rolf, is a, is a gateway to Alert Bay and Santula Island. Again, beautiful. You don't need a boat. There's a little ferry service. Bring your car up, stay with Wolf, go on a photo tour, learn some how to take a good photo, and then get your butt on the ferry and go check out Alert Bay. Go check out the finish, the Vikings first landed on Santula. And then just up the street from the import Hardy <coughs> is the gateway, a ferry system all the way to Haida Gwaii that takes you by Bella Coola, it takes you through the Western Passage. It's gorgeous. You're taking it out of my mouth. We got such <laughs> rich First Nations culture up here, guys. We are so mm -hmm. close with our yeah. First Nations here. Um, it is so an honor for me, especially for me, because it is a big part of why I'm here. You know, I've been the very, I, I believe, one of the very first people even mentioned the residential schools in Europe. This is going back on my very first time I've been to Alert Bay, I think was 28 years ago, mm -hmm. you know. Alet Bay today got a world-renowned museum with yeah. artifacts coming back to the First Nations, to the real owners of it, bringing it in this beautiful museum. This is what I tell my guests. When my guests are coming, they normally stay for five for five nights. Yeah. They go with me or two or three tours. They go over to Sointula on Malcolm Island. They go out to Bear Point. Yeah. They go over to Gorgeous. Cormorant Island, to Alet Bay. It's mm -hmm. a must. Yeah. Don't underestimate how much we have here. One day for whales, one day for, for bears, one day for Cape Scott, and at least one to two days to discover 
Port Alice, Winter Harbor, yes, Outlet Bay. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's just amazing, guys. Don't yeah. just think to come for one day. Yeah. Well, Don't and they got, it. and then also another day needs to be added on so they can watch the brothers on their show. I mean, come on. That, I mean, that's, that's, what, every, <laughs> that's just every Tuesday now. That's just uh, what it is. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so we've sort of touched on it, Rolf, and I just love how we're, all three of us are so excited about adventure and wildlife and sightseeing and exploring. And mm. I mean, that, that's what life's all about. It's quality over or quantity any day. But you touched what you on love. it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean we do. I mean we do the same thing. Everyone thinks we've got like eight floors of corporate staff and a research department. Hey man, here we go. It's not happening. But one of the things you, one of the things that you mentioned, which was I thought really cool, is you sort of tie in this, uh, these deluxe, very personal photo tours. And then what you've done is you've set it up where you've got a bed and breakfast to how how's your guests which I thought was was really cool. So maybe you could tell us a bit about how you've worked that, those both things. So your your tours are not only personal now on the water, they're actually personal when they come home because you're there too. Yeah, let me, let me start with the word photo tours. I really, really want to explain that very clearly because there are such fanatic photographers out there. I'm not for you. <laughs> I, no, let me explain please guys this is very important i do not chase wildlife i do not enjoy taking people out which are sitting in my back and get closer to the whale get closer to the whale first oh, of yeah. all we got laws we have to follow and i also have to follow them and want to follow them and hey it took me 30 years to build up a decent portfolio. Why do you expect to come up here for three hours and get the whale breached, the whale dumped, the whale spy hop, the whale, whatever you want to have? It just doesn't work that way, guys. Yeah. Please, I know we live in a digital world. I know we have Instagram where every day there are trillions of just amazing images. Yes, to a certain degree, you can buy those by getting good guides and you may be lucky and get it. But, but just don't ever expect it we get mm. what the wildlife gods will give us and mm -hmm. <laughs> the good thing why i like to call my tours photo tours is they are for families just as much i love taking families out with kids i got two kids yeah. myself they're nine and ten i love taking couples out you know often i only have two people on board it's amazing yeah. it's like yeah. it's it's for me also super mm -hmm. super nice so when somebody thinks because i call myself photo tours that I will chase the wildlife for you. No, I will never, ever do it. Because rule number one in wildlife photography, do you know it? Respect the wildlife. Almost. Oh! <laughs> Don't That's disturb rule the number zero. That's be, a given. be hidden. That is a given. Respect the wildlife and other people in that matter. Rule number one, be patient we oh. can't force the wildlife to make handstands i mm -hmm. pay those bears every year a hundred thousand dollars and they do not make the handstands when i ask <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. With that? and this union. is really the it's difference the with my, it's the bear this union. is really the difference with my yep. tours guys i don't do three hour tours when i go out i advertise eight to 12 hours i love it i hardly ever come back under 12 hours unless my nice. guests unless my guests are begging me because they say you know we don't have a battery left we don't have any chips left and this is and it's really i'm getting a lot of headwind right now on that one because people don't realize i'm shooting a very expensive camera with 68 megapixels i'm shooting 200 to 600 millimeters i often anchor when the bear is 500 meters away in the bay you know and then he walks right by us I had moms lying down right in front of the boat where we anchored a half an hour before and yeah. nursed their little kids. So yeah. I yeah. let the wildlife come to me. Mm -hmm. And on my tours, we have the time to do that. We don't have to chase the wildlife. Gotcha. Yeah? And I yeah. don't understand people when they are attacking me now online saying, oh, that's a portrait of a grizzly bear. You got to be at least 10 meters away. Well, yeah. first of all, the rule is 50 meters. And when you shoot 600 millimeters with 68 megapixels, I can crop into his eye and this still is sharp. 
Oh yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, Any attacks on one. your probably more jealousy than anything. So please, guys, this is getting really bizarre out there that people think they jump on the three-hour tour and come home with a portfolio of National Geographic shots. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, no, no. If, on their cell phone. Yeah. And if yeah. then I've done really a lot wrong in my life, to be honest. Yeah. No, I, I, that's good. And that's a very good point. I think it's important that we everyone understand that these tours are long. We'll respect the wildlife. You got and like you said, they're not gonna do what you want them to do. They don't do handstands for you. Even if you ask nice, they don't do a handstand for you. So I mean that's and and for people attacking you, I mean that's just pathetic. I yeah, mean, well, I that's just what it is today. That's it's just what internet. it is. We can't yeah, and that. I wouldn't let it bother you because your photos speak for yourself, right? Yeah, but but to be politically correct today, you gotta write on every photo. Well, I used a big telephoto, lots of megapixels, and like no, yeah, yeah. I'm a professional photographer. I sit for hours and hours and let the wildlife come to me. If yep. I then get close, then it's the wildlife's choice, not mm -hmm. me, because my engine is off. I'm anchored somewhere yep. in the bay. And yep. if they decide to come by, well, what do you expect me to do? To put to turn the motor on when the bear is right there and drive <laughs> away and scare? No. Yeah. It's so the same I, with the killer whales. The orcas. So, we yeah, sit there. So, I so tell me control. tell me about the photo tour in the B and B. How do you make that work? Well, don't ask me because I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the B&B is simply my family home. People mm -hmm. sleeping in my personal bed while I yeah. sleep outside in a yurt. I bought a yurt so I don't have to sleep on the boat anymore because that's why I love my boat. I'm getting <laughs> just up there in age. Don't mention it again. No, I, I mean, you're, you're <laughs> just taking a lot of editing work for me, buddy. Yeah. So <laughs> We get a lot of clients asking I'm not doing it for the money. Yes, yep. my guests are paying my bills, but I'm not doing it for the money or I would have a 12 passenger boat. Yeah. And yeah. I only take four people out, which also means I only host two parties. If a family comes, I got three bedrooms upstairs, only one party upstairs. Yep. And I got one party, beautiful big suite downstairs, only one party. I and like for it. me, I deal, we pack up at 4.30 in the morning together have a cup of coffee, jump in the truck, drive to Telegraph Cove or to Port McNeil, depending where we launch. They jump in the boat. After that, I load up the boat on the trailer again, trailer at home, do my homework with the boat, do the mechanics, flush the engines while the guests are sitting outside and having a barbecue. I'm not allowed to serve dinner, mm -hmm. but they can serve themselves. You know, we're having a beer together. Not that I can do that every day, but it's my life. It's my lifestyle. Yep. And this is my summer. Does it get busy? Holy yes. I had 103 tours two years ago in a row. That's like 17, 18 hours without wow. a break. Wow. Wow. But it is so freaking amazingly rewarding yeah. Yeah. when you come home and you see the people and they're telling you, wow, this this was this was the day of my lifetime. And I said, yeah. be careful, your wife. That's a good you. thing. It's, it sounds like a one of a kind tour. I mean, you're very, you're personal and very, I mean, it's the Rolf tour. Uh -huh. It's me. You get what you see. There is nothing, no BS in between. Yeah. You know, so if you got complaints, complain to me. But I fortunately never had any complaints because when you tell me that it's getting too cold, well, then I got blankets for you on the on the boat. Yeah, I yeah. got a little toilet on the boat. I do what my guests want. I yeah, don't perfect. put them in a predefined box. Is it sometimes more expensive for me because we all of a sudden stay out 14 hours? And yeah. we drive like endless. Well, yes, but who cares? You know, yeah. uh, that guest is here once. They trust their vacation time into yeah. my hands. So yeah. that's a lot of pressure. So I do, and that's the only thing I promise. Yeah. I do everything in my power to make sure you will have the very best day I can provide to you. I love if the it. wildlife yeah. doesn't cooperate, well, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. That's yeah. just what it is. No. It happened to it's me in my career. A million times where I booked boats for a week up in Alaska to watch humpback whales, and in a week in the prime time bubble net feeding, I saw one humpback <laughs> in the whole week. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Realize it. This is nature. Yeah. Come yeah. because of the experience and exactly. do not come for yeah. one picture. So you no. desperately. I, I, yeah, the, yeah, that's a exactly. big point because if there's the it's not just the wildlife, but man, there's waterfalls, there's nature, there's coastlines, there's it caves, is, there's just getting out the, there. The, the environment to take pictures. I mean, I looked at your your thing. There's a ton of photos on it. 
that had no wildlife, but stunningly beautiful. Rivers that you've got frozen water, the waterfall where you've slowed the frame down. I saw a couple of those on there. You looked at my thing? Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm, like your, I'm like your biggest fan now, I think. Um, no, you know, we are operating in First Nations territory. We are guests in their territory. Yeah. And their territory, they knew why they lived there a thousand years ago. Because mm -hmm. it's the most beautiful and the richest yeah. place. Yes, I will be having trouble with um, fish farms, which they fortunately have to leave now out of the Broughton Archipelago because we hardly got any salmon left, which we do see with our bears. We hardly got any more cups because the the yeah. females yeah. will not have their babies. They can They're regulate thin. that They're when they don't have enough too. food, when they don't feel healthy. Really? They wow. just don't have it. But I just heard from Alexandra Morton, which, by the way, she just published an amazing book and I, I, I'm not getting paid for that, guys. It's just, she is just as passionate as I am. Um, the salmon is maybe slowly coming back. One of my First Nations friends from Ollet Bay told me he saw some very little ones. So there is hope, but we are not there yet. But there yeah. is hope that we will recover. Fortunately, the government now made the decision to take the farms out. Yeah. I'm not against the fish farms. I know we need the food, but please do it on land the numbers mm -hmm. have have proven that a fish farm can be on land successfully yeah. but uh, but of course the greed just keeps everything we can destroy everything i'm also not against logging because people say are oh, you clean free i'm not i'm a very realistic guy i do also use toilet paper when it's available in post <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm not against those things, you know. Yeah, Don't get yeah. me wrong. But like it's just all overdone. The greed kicked in. We just yeah. have no thinking long term anymore. It's just there is an old tree, mm -hmm. cut it down because it's worth a million dollars. Yeah. What you were what saying we before, say, we really gotta be careful with that with the overtures and once COVID reopens. Yeah. I mean Vancouver Island, Northern Vancouver Island is such a, a gorgeous, pristine area. And we have it's guests like, after guests coming on telling us that over tourism can the, be a problem it's concern. not regulated that's it's my going biggest to be a big concern the tourism with the, surge is going to be huge with the big companies up here which are just investors mm -hmm. they only care about money not even this from is canada what people have to figure out yeah. go with the little guys they are feeding yeah. their families yeah the big guys you pay an investor a dividend with your money, you worked for so hard. People, please realize how yeah. this world functions. And they you rape know? the country. Do yeah. you rather put money, uh, not even money, food on my table and, the, and, the, and my boy's table? Or do you rather pay somebody a dividend? Please, guys, wake up. And this yeah. is what the people have to make that decision. And the yes. people have to regulate that because the government can't. Yeah. The people have to figure out how big do they want to have their operation? Do they mm -hmm. want to be in a lodge with 150 people? Or do they want to be in a lodge with maybe 15 or 20 people? It's mm -hmm. a huge difference. Yeah, it's so a people, big difference. Please do your yeah. research. Yeah. And they're also got, and that's a big thing. You got to watch, we've got to follow the money where it's going. It's not staying in Canada either, by the way, just so you people know that a lot of these big corporations are head office. And I'll give you a good example. Expedia owns TripAdvisor, Expedia owns Hotel.com, Expedia owns all these big companies. And not one of them invest a dollar back into Canada, but they take our 15%, 18% on every booking, take it out, and they're gone. It's just, it's terrible. And you're okay. right. Educate the public. They need to know how to travel. Because you bring TripAdvisor up. Let me bring this up. <laughs> I recently received two absolutely nasty refuse. So there are like 80 amazing refuse, the best day of my life. Uh, and somebody uh. want to hurt me personally. I don't know if it's a competitor or yeah. whoever it is. It doesn't matter. It but doesn't. I went to TripAdvisor That's the problem and with told TripAdvisor. them, and I can prove it, yeah. that I did not even have guests in I know. September. Not, we, exactly. Believe me, we've got but clients one, all over this country. We have B&Bs that have shut down because of TripAdvisor. They've had to change their name. They've had to go out and do everything. TripAdvisor is the worst thing. And I'll put this out there. TripAdvisor is the worst thing for tourism because if you mm -hmm. want to hurt somebody, if you want to damage somebody's business, you can do it. Yes and no. Yes and no. Let me let me say this. When people are smart enough, and I believe they are, mm. when they read 
from 85 stars or 70 or 100, I don't even know how many I have because I don't really care. I don't even ask my guests to leave one because I appreciate their privacy. Uh -huh. And do you got to give their phone number and emails and then spam comes. So I don't even ask him for. But when there are 70 reviews talking about the day of their lifetimes and an unforgettable, and then there is one, yeah, they talking about how I respect the wildlife, how how uh, passive I am okay, around the, yeah. the the wildlife, and then there is one refute in all capital letters. He's harassing wildlife. Come on, guys, please. This yeah. is this is common sense 101, you know. Yeah. But TripAdvisor, because it's a big company, and I'm not a paid member, and that is the key point. Yeah. Because if I would be a key member and I go to them and say, guys, I did not even have a family in my house. So how can somebody say I was really nasty to their daughter? All my family is here. They're my families. It's just like my my families when yeah. other families are here. So yeah. and I can prove it to TripAdvisor. They don't care. No, they, they don't. No. They use me as a non-paying member right now yeah. to get their bad reputation about bad reviews because the bad reviews have been taken off the big guys because they yeah. pay for it yeah. and they leave them with the little guys so yeah. they can say no no we do leave the bad oh, reviews I, 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 and I, I, it I makes you to... it makes the little guy have to sign up in order to get it off no I mean, I, you know what I don't, I, i've been i've been in tourism 25 years and i've uh and i i think i've got a pretty good hand on i'm gonna trip advisor is not good for this industry in any way shape or form it's uh there and i and that's just my view and everyone has their own view but I do agree with this. Do your research. Look where your money's going. Who are you supporting? Where is that money going? Is it staying? Is it a building? Is it helping a family put their kids to school and putting food on the table? Or is it going to some rich guy who has a 55 foot yacht in Florida where their head office is? That's what I would like you to get out of this. And Rolf, that's a great example. You got to do your research because where your money goes counts. And we know that now because COVID's taught us that about shop local the support the little guy yeah support yeah. the little guy i mean nobody so we're running up we're running support behind first so nations. Well. Yes. Yeah. support first nations too please you yes, know exactly i don't yeah. want to get into politics but <clears throat> yeah. you know they yeah. really yeah. they're just lovely people like you and me you know ah. i totally appreciate them yeah. so please yeah. I, uh, I, I, uh, I, one of my competitors i don't see him as competitor because my niche is so small that i don't see anybody as competition this is why i all, always always and always and always not even promote my business i normally promote the north island because i love it and this is what i'm doing for 35 years i pr promote the north island and everybody up here is, oh he's the big competitor go with sea wolf mikey has amazing tours he's a first nations from the king com inlet he's doing amazing tours yeah yeah they're building a new lodge right now. It's amazing, oh, cool. guys. That's go with cool. First yeah. Nations too. Go with me too, please. Yeah. But again, I only take four people, so I'm very limited. But yeah. there but are book, so many amazing it, tours it. here. Yeah. So, Ralph, before we let you go, is there anything uh, that we might have missed that you'd like to share with our audience? Oh, May, I already said that at the beginning. You got another week. Well, we got, ah! we got 23 hours to go. I guess we're going to have to bring Ralph back and get part two. I think I really, so. I really want to do a shout out to that one person who's helping me, Jackie, with social media. She's doing an amazing job on Facebook. It's just getting too much for me. I'm so glad that I at least can help her too because she is, I don't want to get into details because of privacy, but that little money I can pay her for helps her immensely. Perfect. So I'm very glad that I was able, even through COVID, to just, Put her food on the table, you know. This nice is how job. it works, guys. We gotta help each other. Yes. And exactly. the other shout out is just simply to my guests who have been here. Like I see, um, Madeline is online here on Facebook. Uh, these, these are, um, it's a couple, a lovely couple from Nanaimo. I love them to bits. They've been here a couple of times. Um, it's just, it's my guests are really are why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for the money. So for all the guests who are coming. For all my guests who've been here before, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for seeing the little guy out there and not yes. the big corporations. And again, what I can guarantee you is personally, because I'm not a BSer, I will do my very best I can in my power when you're on my boat. I will do everything to make it the best day possible. 
Sometimes weather isn't there. Sometimes the wildlife isn't there. But normally, about 90, 99.999%, we're having pretty good days out there. So yeah, come nice. locals, support your locals. Guys, thank you so much to have me. I'm really happy about it, and um, it's been fun. I could talk for another two hours, as you probably can tell. It's been time. awesome, boy. I love it. We're, yeah. We're, you yeah. are guaranteed guests on our 24-7 telephone. Yeah. <laughs> you guys you know are amazing. It. You guys are doing an amazing <laughs> job. Thank you for taking care of us. We need you guys right now to promote us and not yeah. the big guys. So we're, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, you know what? The beautiful thing is we're one of the small guys yeah. and we're doing a lot of things different than the big guys. And that's sort of what separates us. So we get we get it. We get it big time. Um, Colin, you got anything you'd like to say to our friend Rolf before we let him uh, let him go and we could close it down and uh, and we'll go from there. I uh, just very much appreciate it, Rolf. I mean, you can tell. I mean, your guests are not one time visitors, I'm sure. You can tell just by meeting yeah. you and your personality that. Um, you couldn't take one tour with you. They'd want to come back every year, I'm sure. I got to put a two bits in. Rolf, you're stuck with us for the rest of your life. Back cool. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I had worse people stuck with me before. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I got to do, though, for my Instagram. Guys, follow me, Rolf Hicker Photography, please, on Instagram. Yeah. I welcome been... everybody. Yeah. I, I can't be personally every single day because it's just getting too much for one mm -hmm. main show. But that's where I show my stuff, yeah. you know. And because I had some some people here saying, well, it doesn't sound like we get good photos. You know what? All the photos you uh, see on the Flickr photography, but the older ones, the scans, they're all yeah. taken from my boat, from my tours while I'm captaining yeah. the boat because I make sure my guests are getting the shots. And if I get some on the side, awesome. Yeah. I'm now I on the other side. I've yeah, been a photographer. Everyone's got to check out your website. I mean, the photos there are amazing. They're beautiful. Uh, the color is phenomenal, vibrant. So by all means, and just so you know, Ralph, we've been flogging your <coughs> Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and websites the whole show. So everybody, yeah. as our friend Ralph indicated, you can follow him on RalphHickerPhotography.com. You can look at his other website which is is out there for photos outside of canada hickerphoto.com and you can also find rolf hicker photography on facebook twitter pinterest and instagram and just so you do know instagram is his go-to so thank you very much rolf for coming on our show uh we're gonna let you go now and we will be in touch my friend if you guys ever need anybody again to ruin your show, just give me a yell. <laughs> you, all you've done, all you've done, Mr. Photologist, is bring a delightful story and good time. So we'll talk to you again. I am sure. Thanks, guys. Bye, Take care. Stay safe, guys. You too. Thank you. So, Junior. Yes. Uh, well, Mr. It, what a great guy. Yeah, I mean, so personable. I mean, how could you yeah. not want to go on his tours? I I'm know. Thinking, I'm thinking on those boat tours, and he says he stays out, stay out for yep. seven, eight hours. Yep. I think it's maybe Rolf that wants to stay out, not the guests. Maybe I want to stay out seven, you eight. You can tell he enjoys it. Hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, the, only thing, the only thing is, is, when he was talking about his tours, he would say they all get up and have a coffee. I, we got to make that multiple coffees. I'm sorry. I mean, one <laughs> coffee. I'm not a morning person, so I need like three. You need your own room for an hour, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, I'd like to say thank you to our guest, Mr. Rolf Hicker, uh, a world-renowned wildlife and nature photographer. Please big, support, big, as big. Rolf said, small businesses. Please take a look at his website. Again, I will put it up there on the screen as it is, rolfhickerphotography.com. You can follow Rolf on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Support his Instagram account. That's his go-to. Uh, I like to thank you everybody for joining us tonight. From our friends in Germany, you rock. Thanks for coming up at 4 a.m. See you next week at 4 a.m. And uh, for you newbies, join us every Tuesday night for a live show on our ACAN channel, Facebook, and YouTube page now starting at 7 o'clock. I am a Cobra host of the A Travel Talk Show, and this is my brother Colin. We're the brothers of tourism, the Cobra founders of ACANTravel.com, and the brains and brawn behind the A Canada Marketing Room. Tomorrow. Yes. You'll find this interview with Rolf 
on all our social. We have eight social media pages. You'll find it on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, LinkedIn, and Facebook. You'll also see it on our travel live community feed on our award-winning, largest privately operated 16,000-page website. And then next week, we'll see you here, same time. Same place, 7 p.m. right here on the AKIRTravel.com Facebook and YouTube pages. And remember, plan smarter, book better, stay longer when booking and planning your travels on AKIRTravel.com because we are the small guys and we do not take commissions and everything. We are here to promote our clients and we are here to promote business. Be, peace out, Canada. Be safe. And Junior, you got the floor, buddy. I got the floor to announce next week. We got uh, Matt Stewart, who is a 20 plus year coach. Coaches Community Cultivation, senior leaders across North America in the healthcare industry, global finance, and major international sports events, including Olympics, Paralympics, Pan Am Games, and he also is in film production. Stay tuned. <laughs>